16th of March and part three of the Watchman's ongoing analysis of the continuing dispute between former Commissioner Gary Griffith and the Prime Minister Keith Rowley. And in addition to the interview that Gary did with Dale and Tony, he had another interview with with the folks at 95.9 FM out in New Jersey. So shout out to Anton and his, and his people doing year man service for Trinidad and Tobago, even though they are out in the cold, as, as it were. But what came out clearly from that interview was that Gary listens to my voice notes. Because I caught him backtracking on something that he said that I challenged in my, my previous voice note. You remember I raised the issue of why did he talk about the gentleman from Tobago who was a friend of the Prime Minister, who the Prime Minister, Prime Minister spoke to him about, about the gentleman's application for a firearm dealer's license. And I said, if the gentleman was not qualified, and Gary issued one to him, then Gary broke the law. And the Prime Minister did nothing wrong by talking to Gary or asking him a question about it or even making a recommendation. Gary had to backtrack like a goatee on the interview and I'd say, yes, the man was qualified. He was qualified. And many people talked to him about, about firearm licenses, all kinds of people from everywhere. So why then did you make it appear that the Prime Minister was trying to get some special favor or to influence you in, a, in, a, in, in some wrongful way in, in order to, um, to, to help his friend? When in fact, you are the person authorized to give firearm um, licenses and permits and certificates and people talk to you all the time. But what was more alarming to me and, and shocking to me is when he was asked the question about to whom he granted rifles. And he was talking about people who are being granted um, more than one or four or five guns because they are firearm trainers. I would like to know how many of those people who have more than 10 guns were certified firearm trainers and instructors prior to getting those, those firearms. The audit that is ongoing will tell us exactly what the truth is about that. But I'm sure it will expose that some of the things Gary is saying does not pass muster. But he went further to talk about him granting licenses to government ministers. And he even went so far as to identify a government minister to whom he, he gave a rifle. A, a government minister to whom he gave a rifle. And then he went on with a wink and a nod and a smile to describe him as a young man, a young guy, a young fellow. And to me, listening to it and watching him, I believe that he was making a pun on the word young. And was identifying in that way that it was possibly the only young a person named Young, who is there as a government minister. But no, if that is true, if it, you know, the person you're identifying by that pun is Stuart Young, he must come out and say if what Gary is saying is true. And if it's true, then that raises more serious questions about the ability or inability of Gary to maintain confidentiality for information that comes to him in, 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 in his professional work. Come on. So now you have identified the minister if that is so. And now the criminals and everybody know. And they could target him because, because you have told them what he has. Is that, the, is that their business? Was that any of their business? So what was the intention? Again, to drag members of government down. And that is the problem you have with someone who has political 
intentions and motivations. They try to big themselves up, especially when they're talking to people who do not know the real answers. And so even they, when, they, when they get wrong answers, they don't know how to correct it. No. Every time he appears, he gives his, his talking points over and over again. But nobody asks simple questions. Like I heard him say, he created the marine, the marine branch. Really? Didn't the police have a marine branch long time ago that was disbanded uh, under, uh, under Selwyn Richardson? So how, what, how you, are you talking about recreate? And is it you? There is no I in team. It involves the government. It involves the minister. It even involves the opposition in some instances to pass things that are necessary to be used by the police to, to carry out law and order. Why is that every statement Gary makes is I? I did this. I did that. It is never I. It is always we. And in some cases, it's them. And the I will get the benefit of it by virtue of being in charge. That's how it works. And why are they letting him get away with this? I, of course, I was, I was happy that 95.9 that asked him some, some pointed questions. Unfortunately, they didn't know how to dig. So he was able to avoid damage by just segueing into um, something else, like how he segues, um, he wants to segue from the commissioner's position into becoming prime minister or some other position. But if they know the things I know, he can't get away with that. And he won't get away with it. But also, I saw and heard people giggling when, he's, when he makes insulting remarks about well-meaning, well-serving, distinguished members of the, of, of, of the country, distinguished professionals, by making disparaging remarks about them. Like, for example, saying that, that's, that Stanley John will used to use muskets. He do nothing about rifles. Well, you know what he know. Come on, man. And starting to insult them because of the investigations. Stanley John understands more about investigations and about law and order and about law generally than Gary will know in five lifetimes. And the same applies to the other gentleman, Mr. Barrington, retired senior superintendent, who Gary was saying that was carrying suitcases for dignitaries in the airport in New York. So what? Everybody knows, especially security professionals, know and or ought to know that in, in terms of securing the person of a dignitary, you must also pos um, secure their possessions so that people can go put guns, bombs, listening devices, illegal um, um, drugs or anything on that person. And therefore, it is the responsibility of the special branch officers based in New York or wherever, especially in New York where we have both an embassy and, and, and a, um, a permanent mission to the UN, to ensure that the dignitaries' luggage and, are, are secured. So what is wrong with that? If the person is taking responsibility and accountability, and he knows more about policing than Gary will learn in 10 lifetimes. So why try to disparage and insult people the way he always does? Even that term he keeps using about, about um, mustard and, 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 and ketchup is a way of disparaging and undermining the, the aspirations of Trinidad and Tobagonians because of the colors of the, of the party that they follow. Those are not the only two parties in the, in the country. Why talk about them only? Why don't talk about the colors of the other parties? Because you are trying to put yourself in between to make yourself a viable alternative. A viable alternative to who? To who? Most of those people are more skilled, more experienced, more knowledgeable, and understand things better about the country than, than you do. That is my opinion. So stop this nonsense, no one. I don't want to hear media people laughing and giggling like they are little children when, they are, when, when these nonsense is going on.
You notice that Gary, only one group he doesn't really try to disparage or insult is Calypsonians. You know why? Because he knows we're ready for him and we're waiting for him. And we will posterize him forever and ever. And now that we know he has a political intention, a, a, a political slant, he better be on his be best behavior because we don't need Carnival to sing. And there are things we will let people know that he will never, ever live down. So let's be, let's be truthful here. I only focus on the things that affect the police service generally. And the workings and runnings of the police service. And Gary was never a real police. He was commissioner of police by a great era of judgment by the prime minister in my opinion for supporting him even the opposition did not support him they abstained because in my opinion they knew the character they were dealing with and i'm sure the prime minister got advice from the old soldiers like Dillon and sandy and those guys who who he he loves to disparage now I sure you got advice on them to don't touch that man with a 10 foot rod. So, Mr. Rowley, this part is for you. Yes, you're saying you're disappointed. No, sir, I think you're using a diplomatic word. The man was an unmitigated disaster for you. And he has created a headache that will continue until the next elections when he challenges you in Digo Martin West for your position. <laughs> I will laugh at that one because I know it ain't not coming to pass. If anybody understands the politics of the country, they will know that that's not the way it works. And don't talk about any unscientific um, survey. Anybody who will depend on these kind of surveys for the political future or for their job or, or, or such is a fool and a fool and his money and everything else is soon parted. <laughs>